If you've been watching YouTube recently, you'll have seen quite a lot about the Makoyu Prospect, which is about to, to spud in Zimbabwe. It's described by the operator as the largest undrilled prospect on shore Africa. Well, today it's a subject of a Trove News video. So here's a location map showing where Makoyu is. It's basically northwest of Harare, the capital of Zimbabwe. We've watched the presentations, we've been studying this for some time, we've looked at the CPR summaries, and we've uh, attended the broadcasts. Now, we have an alternative take on Makoyu, all based on public domain material. And here's why we think it's different. The operator we know is much more data than we can show, so you may wish to uh, challenge our interpretations. In many publications, it's listed as having uh, 20 TCF gas, 845 million barrels of condensate on a prospective resource. That equates to 4.3 billion barrels of oil equivalent. That's on an unrisk basis. It's anticipated it's going to be a conventional gas condensate field if it's successful. There are numerous studies. It's been an evolving story. We've been following it for quite some time, and some of the old presentations are, are quite revealing. The latest competent persons report was concluded in June 2022 by ERCE, but there have been two others. GTEC did one in 2019, and Netherlands Sewell did one back in 2018. And it's kind of interesting to compare and contrast these. So let's have a look at the seismic. Now, formerly this was known as the Muzzarabeni prospect. It was identified by Mobile. They relinquished it in the 1990s. We can see here that uh, there are some apparent uh, anomalous amplitudes. It says they're a good fit to structure, uh, more flat spots. This is a 2D grid and it doesn't doesn't entirely cover the feature. Uh, we'll have a look at that. Anomalies uh, that are shown, they're clearly visible, but some of them are actually off in the, uh, the sink line. So on this line down here, we can see very obvious amplitudes, and th these are these are obviously somewhat different. Now, it could be that these are um, basalt intrusions or extrusions, because there was indeed some volcanic activity in uh, in relatively recent geological past. Described as flat spots, high amplitude with potential trap. We uh, we look in here, and uh, the discussion is that the amplitudes terminated are about the same two-way time. Well, there is a difference between them as we measure it from the uh, the lines shown but times one thing we, we need to understand what it is in depth the potential for a greater closure well the seismic runs out on the western side uh, not clear how uh, some of these extrapolations of contours uh, arrive at this interpretation but you can see it's been sort of uh, closed off here this would be the sort of the spill point for the structure this is the uh, the prospect here's where the well is going to be located and we'll look at it on uh, this map here so uh, what I really like about this presentation is they, they show here the 100 millisecond window. So this map, which is a, a maximum positive AVO gradient map, a lot is made of the AVO conformance to structure or the direct hydrocarbon indicator conformance to structure. Well, if we look on the uh, the south side, the green showing the um, the limits of the closure, and you can see there's very, very close correlation. Just highlight that here. And you can see very, very clearly. But you'll also see this green line is actually going off up here and indeed goes off the map up to the northwest. This is where the well's going to be drilled. It's actually being drilled quite a long way down dip. So the crest of the structures in this region here, there's maybe a secondary culmination over here. Could we actually be leaving a, a commercial up dip potential uh, in drilling so far down dip? Anyway, it's always a compromise whether you drill a, a wildcat well on the crest and maybe not prove up enough uh, economic volume, or whether you drill down dip and you don't uh, you, you you potentially leave so, uh, something behind, or uh, the potential uh, maybe needs a second well to to establish whether it's there or not. But anyway, we'll go on and we'll uh, we'll have a look at this. So this is the well and it's about to spud so here's the anomaly and then the well you know some of the uh, the contours running off the map there so it has been kind of forced to close off it doesn't really fit the structure so we can clearly see that the uh, the amplitude it doesn't cover this northern part of the uh, of the prospect so it doesn't really conform to structure um, there's no uh, no obvious evidence of thinning in here the operators said that uh, there's more intense fault slithers in this region well is the intensity here any greater than the uh, the intensity in, in this region uh, we've come up with a with an alternative 
expensive idea, and uh, that is that this is hydrodynamically trapped. Well, what is a hydrodynamic trap? So this this was a, a screenshot from uh, one of the online videos. Direct hydrocarbon indicators, including flat spots and amplitude anomalies with conformance to structure. We don't agree with that statement. So here is a seismic line, uh, top right, and underneath here's a map, and it, this shows the location of the seismic line. I think it's important to actually put on here, this is where Makuyu is, just in the uh, in the licensed area here. You can see that uh, what it's showing is uh, the mat extent of the outcrop of, of these sequences. And likewise, you can see on the seismic line that these things actually crop out at surface. Now, what this sets up is the potential for meteoric waters actually coming in and, and entering this system into the various uh, aquifers. And uh, we would be getting lots of water coming into this basin, into this sort of artesian system. And th with it would be bringing lots and lots of microbes and, and bugs. So great potential for um, biodegradation in this region. It's the upper Angua, which is the primary target in here. And we'll talk about the other horizons as, as we go through this. The sort of the, on this seismic line, you can see the vector is showing that it's coming in here, but that could actually be coming in from a northwest to, to southeast. We, we, we'd be kind of speculating at this stage here, but something to be considered because the, the very, very strong chance that it's uh, quite shallow potential that uh, these meteoric waters could actually lead to a significant biodegradation. Here's uh, looking at the stack pay. The principal target here is the upper Angua, and here's the uh, the various volumes that have been calculated for each of these zones here. Uh, and then you can see these all add up to the 20 TCF and 845 million. So each one of these would have to have a sort of separate charging mechanism either a migration pathway from a long distance or uh, some connection with the source rock to actually bring hydrocarbons into the uh, the traps. Now also traps need to be uh, preserved perhaps for you know a million years, tens of million years, perhaps uh, in some cases depending on the structure was formed into hundreds of millions of years. Totally agree with the operator. If any one of these horizons come in, we're off to the race, as they say. And uh, we agree. Four billion barrels of oil equivalent? Sounds a very high number. Let's have a look at the stratigraphy. So uh, what we can see here, a breakout of all the targets. Here's the primary target here, the upper Anqua. We've got secondary targets, we've got tertiary targets. We've got source rocks identified here in the permian Makanga formation and lesser source rocks. These are, these are thinner shales here up in the uh, Anqua sandstone sequence, the lower Triassic. And uh, we're looking here at uh, uh, interbedded shales, mudstones, uh, and coals. So in this very, very sandy sequence here, there's limited seal capacity, a very generalized stratigraphic column. Here we see more interbedded sediments, more opportunity for seals. Uh, we'll note here we, uh, we, we talked about intrusives, and within the basin it's recognized that there are indeed these Jurassic-aged um, basalts uh, within there, so they're presumably based on uh, outcrop studies. So if we look at the seal potential, well, the crest is at 2000. This is at the, uh, the upper Angua uh, structure map. It may not be the current map, but it'll do for our purposes. So we can see here that uh, the crest around about 2050 meters. The lowest closing contour, 2,750, that sets up 700 metres of vertical relief, over 2,000 feet. Now, we need significant seal capacity. There have been uh, measurements made of that, but uh, none support a number of um, 700 metres of, uh, of gas condensate. I think uh, it was actually an oil case that was run, so not quite the same um, buoyancy effect there. So this is quite a lot to ask of, of relatively thin shales, uh, so shallow. But what we can see on here is each of these contours are a 250 meter contour interval. So uh, the, the throws on these faults, you know, we can see things perhaps from uh, anywhere between 20 and perhaps up to as much as 100 meters of throw on some of these faults. And we ask the question, are the shales thick enough to maintain the seal? We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. So uh, looking at the fetch area, this is where the uh, mature source rocks are. We won't actually get oil uh, in recent geological times coming through this syncline. Anything to the north of this, uh, this white line we've kind of put in here, that'll all head off to the north. It's only things within here that'll actually head towards the prospect. 
So there is a, a good fetch area. There's possibly also a limit here on the, on the east side where some of this material will, will actually head east, not west, towards the prospect. Let's have a look. And this is a conceptual section. It's just trying to illustrate uh, what the play is. So on here we count seven horizons. Now you can see that these relatively thin shales in this very sandy overburden, and it's really these thicker shales and the coals lower down in the sequence in the lower Triassic to Permian section. When we look in a bit more detail, we can see the potential for, for these to actually spill. We actually offset the throw, offsets these mudstones and allows for juxtaposition of sands and potentially sets up a fairly a leaky seal system in here. This is the limit of the connected kitchen. Anything, any oil generated and reaching these carrier beds will actually move out to the north. This is the mature source rock, potentially. You can see that we actually have to generate hydrocarbons from this region. Now, any hydrocarbons generated over here and moving up the sequence, probably going to move away from the prospect. But in order to charge some of these shallow horizons, it has to leak, it has to leak up. So that's an inevitability of, of charging, charging this prospect. We don't have the potential for uh, long distance migration in this tight and confined basin setting. So uh, we've talked about the seal capacity. It has to be very, very good if this is going to be a 700 meter gas condensate column that it's going to have to withstand. Uh, and there's the, uh, there's the southern limit. So um, hydrocarbon generated in this region here will actually be heading towards the, the basin margin. And, and, and these could be uh, valid prospects here, but none of it is contributing to the, uh, the main prospect. We could talk about uh, many of these things and you can pause the video and, and look around this screen if you wish. I want to just draw your attention to this here now. Um, I've got nine horizons on here. But I want to draw your attention here to the top of the upper Angua formation, the primary reservoir. And what you can see is clearly significant offset of these horizons here. So likely we've got sand sand juxtaposition across here and great potential for hydrocarbons to, to leak out of this system. In terms of chance of success, there's uh, numbers in the ERCE competent persons report and Invictus quoting them. They quote two. These are the numbers from ERCE and for Invictus, they have two numbers. Uh, th these latter basically, if the direct hydrocarbon indicator is real, uh, they can up the chance of success. But we th we don't think this is valid because it doesn't conform to structure. So we see this as a high risk prospect. Other comments, Gazettel notice, well, uh, the operator is not too worried about the, the second well in the sequence, um, that there's time to get the title sorted out. Carbon offset project, uh, probably, probably a little bit premature. Uh, we need to establish that there is actually um, hydrocarbons in Makoyu before we start having to worry about offsetting carbon from this, uh, this particular opportunity. One thing that the operator is hopeful that the Petroleum uh, Services Agreement will be signed but the, the company already making a major investment in getting the rig on location. I hope that the uh, Zimbabwean government can actually uh, ratify and, and sign that document as soon as possible because this is a significant commitment of capital by the operator. Now, the overall assessment, well, it, we think it's a high risk prospect. It is over high. Too often, the 4.3 billion barrel oil equivalent number of the bombshell, it's left hanging. There is a very, very, very low chance that this is going to be of that size, in our opinion. Highly unlikely to work at multiple horizons for the reasons that we've outlined above. Uh, the rig is on location and uh, anticipate it's going to take somewhere between 45 to 60 days to drill. I think the, uh, the dry hole costs around about $12 million. We wish Invictus every success. We know how hard it is to uh, drill wildcats in, in a new basin, but at the same time, I think we, uh, we, need, to, we need to stay realistic. Um, here's the uh, share price through time, benign for a number of years here, and it seems like uh, there's building anticipation as the spud date approaches. Now, we do not recommend buying or selling any stocks. We have no position in Victus or any of the partners in this venture. We purely make a technical assessment of the material, the publicly available material uh, that we've collated for this, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, we believe that the investors should be informed and able to make their own assessment based on, uh, on the risk and reward for, the, uh, for this opportunity. Here is a screenshot from a video that was actually released today, the 24th of August, 2022. And there's the, uh, there's the hyperlink there. 
And you can see here's the uh, here's the derrick actually uh, laying down on its side, about to be lifted into place, about ready to go. Give us some feedback. What do you think of this prospect? Is the 4.3 billion barrels of oil prospective resource a reasonable summation? Is that number overhyped? Is this the largest undrilled onshore prospect in Africa? We'd love to be proven wrong, but our intuition tells us that this is how to characterise this play. At the end of the day, buyer beware. Please add your comments below. Here's our entry for Mukayu from our Trove database. Get in touch if you want our technical advice on investments. We obviously don't make videos where we give professional advice. Just ask us a question. We've got lots of uh, videos out there on YouTube. Uh, pause the video and have a look and see if there's any here that are of interest. Please subscribe to the channel. Support us, liking us, subscribing, sharing, and ring the bell. Thanks for watching. Look forward to having you back at this channel soon. Bye for now.